I'm sure that any designers watching would say this isn't a particularly pretty object. It's got things sticking out all over the place. It's, it's full of aggressiveness. It's full of tubes and bits and pieces. But that is largely dictated by the purpose to which the vehicle is to be put. Indeed, this complex of exhaust pipes down here is not neat, but it is forced upon us by the way we've had to build the engine in order to get the performance out of it. And that kind of compromise is, is visible all over the place. The shape of the tank, of course, has got to fit the rider. Um, yet, when he's sitting on it with his knees along here, you've still got to be able to read who's made the machine. Now, uh, one could say it would be possible to design this to look very much like the stream, nice and smooth, no protuberances, nice and easy to ride, no complications. But the point is, if we did do that, very likely the enthusiast wouldn't, wouldn't buy it. But there's another aspect to this which is quite intriguing, and that is that this frame in here is really much the same as it has been for a very long period of time now. And the reason why it stays the same is because you can't really better it. So say the world's largest motorcycle manufacturers, with 3,000 people working in their research and development department. is probably the world's smallest motorcycle factory, sited at a tumble-down cottage in the Wiltshire Downs with a combined research and development staff of one, namely himself, Malcolm Neal, design revolutionary, thinks differently. Yeah, good afternoon. Biking, of which I've had 100 plus vehicles, a lot of them have not been suitable in many ways, and some of them have been suitable in most ways, but not all. So I involve, for my own personal habits and personal reasons, my style of biking. This really consists of basic logic, of trying to reduce the height or the physical size of the vehicle itself as it passes through the air. Air, in essence, is a fluid, and you need to penetrate it as smoothly as possible. The fairing systems are somewhere towards that. There has to be compromises because not all humanity are the same size. But the humans have to be put in the smallest possible position, which, as on racing cars, is the laid-back effect of looking at one's toenails. We've lowered the seat height, we've got rid of telescopic forks, and replaced those with centre hub steer. And this is the result of all that garbage we gave you before. A shape of aerodynamics to enhance my lack of it. Having a fairing, the low seat height, the aerodynamics playing for me rather than against me, utilizing airflow on the outside and internally. The internal airflow is taking the heat from these rather large cylinders, bring it up on the inside of the fairing so as to produce a large, warm, woolly mass, which holds away that cold air and cold drafting, alias flies and stuff. The low seat height, allied with this very rigid frame, gives you that road holding. So for every angle of dangle that you put down, there's more going for your tires and less going away with gravity. Because the lower you can put your mass, the faster you can corner, the better you can brake. And behind us here, We have the reason for all this excitement, the center hub itself. The center hub is based on this swing arm, very similar to what you would use on the rear of your conventional machine. An axle, again, same as you have on a conventional machine, but on our axle, right in the midst, right in the center, there is a spherical joint. This enables this wheel to actually turn on the axle, turned by the rods from the steering, and alleviating the problem of having suspension loads being transferred through your steering, as on the conventional machine, to climb up a telescopic fork some 30 inches from the tarmac, be transmitted again through the frame before it can be distributed and lost. By using a center hub system, we transmit directly from the axle into the frame. A great deal of rigidity is given. Rigidity is predictability. It means that you are more au fait of what's going on under your bum than you were on the conventional machine. <laughs> it's all marvellous, really. Centre hub steer. 
giving that sensitivity that can't be gained from a telescopic fork system, which has so much flex in comparison.